Today I've got a problem from Cambridge University's entrance exam step. This is the maths admissions test you've got to do if you want to study maths at Cambridge. And it's an integration question. It's got a few different parts, so let's get stuck right in. By integrating one of the two terms in the integrand by parts or otherwise, find this integral here. Part two, find this other integral here. Part three, sketch the graph with equation y equals e to the x over x, giving the coordinates of any stationary points. Part B, find A if the integral from A to 2A of e to the x over x dx equals the integral from A to 2A of e to the x over x squared dx. And part C, show that it is not possible for distinct integers m and n, or to find distinct integers m and n such that this integral equals this integral. A really cool question with kind of interestingly lots of different integrals. So like this one's got a sign in, this one's got square roots in, this one's got e in. Um, a pretty interesting problem. Do give this one a go. This is from step two, 2022. Okay, let's get stuck in with part one. It gives us a huge clue to integrate one of these two terms by part. So let's pick this second one here, just because it looks like a little bit messier. So if I integrate it by part, I can maybe make it a little bit nicer. So I've got 3x cubed over root 1 plus x cubed. Now, this comes with a little bit of experience here. But what I'm going to do is write that integral as the integral of 3x squared over root 1 plus x squared, uh, or x cubed even, sorry, times x dx. Now, the reason for that is this then this thing here integrates quite nicely because I've got 3x squared on the top and the denominator is a function of u, uh, sorry, th uh, x cubed and x cubed, the derivative of it is 3x squared. So um, here I'm going to make my u x and so my du is equal to dx and I'm going to make my dv equal to 3x squared over root 1 plus x cubed dx and therefore my v would just equal 2 times 1 plus x cubed to the half. Uh, if you're not super comfortable with your integration, that is something you really have to be good at going into the step exam. So it's not super exciting, but you have to just do integral after integral after integral. This integration by parts should be straightforward. This step here to here, maybe when you first see it, you might be like, oh my gosh, how has he done that? But this is stuff you, you're expected to be able to do quickly to be able to do well in step. Um, so we get v is 2 times 1 plus x cubed to the half. And so if I just sub all of this in, I'm just going to be a bit cheeky here. I'm going to call this integral here i. And so therefore i is equal to u times v, so x times that, so 2x times the square root of 1 plus x cubed, minus the integral of v times du, which is minus the 2 times the integral of 1 plus x cubed to the half dx. But super conveniently, that is just that integral there. And so if I add this guy to this guy, it's essentially just adding this thing to the left-hand side. And so I'm left with simply 2x times root 1 plus x cubed. So this thing here is 2x root 1 plus x cubed. And of course, I can't forget the plus c. Cool, a pretty nice integral there where we kind of started to integrate one term by parts and the integral that we get left over cancels out entirely with the other part of our integral. That's super, super nice. Let's move on to part two. In part two, we've got this other really weird integral, and it's kind of different to part one. And uh, the integral of x squared plus two times sine x over x cubed dx. And there's no hints at all whatsoever, or so it seems. Actually, the hint is part one. In step problems, we know that we've got to use previous parts to help us. That's just how they like writing the step problems. So. As someone sitting the step, I should not be surprised whatsoever if the technique to solving part B has got, or part two even, has got something to do with part one. Of course, there's no real like evidence for that, just more the fact that that's how they write design step problems. So maybe I want to write this as something plus something, which I can easily do by expanding the bracket. So this is going to be sine x over x plus two sine x over x cubed dx. Okay, cool. Now, maybe I want to do a similar thing, as I say, with part one, right? I want to integrate one of these two things by parts. And again, I'm going to go with a slightly messier one, the second term here, and again, try and clean it up by parts. So we've got 2 sine x times x to the minus 3 dx. So I'm going to make u equal... Um, so here, well, I want to make this look something like this guy. So I need the denominators to become from x cubed to x. Now, I can't do that in one step. 
I might need to do this twice, but what I can do is certainly get this closer to x by making the power turn to minus 2 by integrating. So I'm going to make this the thing that I integrate, so therefore my u is going to be 2 sine x, and so my du is 2 cos x dx, and I'm going to make my dv equal to x to the minus 3 dx, Ooh. and so my v is just going to be negative a half x to the minus 2, like so. And so therefore this integral, let me call it j, I can say therefore j equals uh, u times v, so negative x to the minus 2 sine x, minus the integral of v times du dx, so that's going to be plus the integral of cos x, x to the minus 2 dx. Okay, cool. This might not seem very useful because I don't get sine x over x, but I get cos x over x squared. And that's really nice because I can see I just need to do integration by parts one more time on this. This cos is going to differentiate to give me a sine x. Well, it's going to give me minus sine x, but I'm actually not too interested in the coefficient in front or the constant in front. And this x to the minus 2, that's going to integrate to give me x to the minus 1. Again, I'm not interested in the co uh, constant in front. Okay, so let's do this. Let's call this here maybe integral k. I'm soon going to run out of letters, I imagine, in this problem. Uh, let's have a go at this. So we're going to do u equals uh, cos x. So du is minus sine x dx. dv is going to be x to the minus 2 dx. And so v is going to be minus x to the minus 1. And so therefore k equals u times v, so minus cos x over x minus the integral of v times d dx, that's going to be minus, 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 so triple negative sine x over x dx. And this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. So we know that this integral here, the one that we started with, let me zoom out a bit, is uh, equal to the integral of sine x over x plus j. Um, so let me, in fact, let me reverse engineer this. So we've got k now. So k so j, therefore, is equal to minus x to the minus 2 sine x plus k, so minus cos x over x, and then minus the integral of sine x over x dx. And so, therefore, this integral here, uh, which, remember, is just the integral of sine x over x dx plus j, is simply going to be uh, minus x to the minus 2 sine x minus cos x over x plus c, like so. Another pretty cool integral where if you gave that integral just like that, it might not be super clear how to do that or evaluate that integral. But knowing that we've done part one, it's not surprising the technique is exactly the same. Let's move on to part three. On so part A, we want to sketch the graph with equation y equals e to the x over x. So um, lots of different ways we can do this. First, I'm thinking about what values x can take and what values x can't take. So x can be pretty much any real number except zero. OK, well, let's think about the intercepts as well. So when x is zero, oh, well, that's not in the domain, so we can't sub that in. What about when y is zero? Well, we get zero equals e to the x over x. And I immediately see that has no solutions because multiplying by x, gives me e to the x equals zero, and there's no solutions to that. Okay, cool. This graph just doesn't intersect any of the axes. That's fine. Um, let's, I mean, there's a few ways you can kind of think about this, but maybe it's worth thinking about what happens uh, to e to the x. We're kind of dividing it by x. So if you think of the graph of e to the x, at least for positive values of x, we're dividing it by x, so we're kind of bringing it down by a factor. But e to the x over x is still going to approach infinity as x approaches infinity. Um, so maybe there's a turning point in there, but let's have a look. So um, we're going to differentiate this. So dy dx, um, so just using maybe the quotient rule here, is v times u dx, so uh, x times e to the x minus e to the x times 1, all over x squared, like so. And if we want to find the turning points, we make dy dx equal 0. And so that gives us x times of e to the x times x minus 1 equals 0, e to the x can't equal 0. So, of course, there's only one turning point, and that's uh, at the point 1, comma, e. So when x is 1, y would be e, so e to the 1 over 1. Okay, cool. So we've got a turning point at 1, e, so sketch this here. So 1, e is maybe there. Uh, we can kind of see when x is slightly bigger than 0, so when x is 0.0001, e to the x is basically 1, and I'm dividing it by something that's super close to 0. 
So it's going to be positive infinity. So it's going to have a vertical asymptote there. It's going to come down to this turning point, and then it's going to come out like so. And similarly on the flip side, so when x is uh, close to zero but negative, so negative 0 0.0001, it's going to be down here. And as x tends to negative infinity, this guy, e to the x, will tend to zero. And dividing it by something that's approaching negative infinity is only going to make it get to zero more quickly or approach zero more quickly. So it's going to look something like this. Not a great sketch, but that's roughly speaking um, what this does. And then I guess, yeah, I should mark this as 1e, like so. OK, great. Part B, find A if the integral from A to 2A of e to the x over x dx equals the integral uh, from A to 2A of e to the x over x squared dx. Okay, let me change pen color for this. Hmm. Neither of these integrals look nice to evaluate, at least directly. Um, and that kind of, I guess, I know that from experience, having dealt with integrals, they probably don't have a nice antiderivative. But that doesn't matter for this problem, because if we think about what we did in part one and part two, we didn't actually really evaluate the integrals. It kind of just cancelled out nicely, and something similar happens here. So e to the x over x squared is slightly messier than e to the x over x, so I'm going to integrate this by parts. I'm going to do it as an indefinite integral for the time being, because I can see the result might be useful for part c as well. So the integral of e to the x over x squared dx, I'm going to make my u equal e to the x, so du equals e to the x dx. dv is going to be uh, x to the minus 2 dx, and so v is negative x to the minus 1. Subbing this all in, this integral here equals u times v, so negative e to the x over x minus the integral of v times du dx, so that's going to be plus the integral of e to the x over x dx. Perfect, okay, how do I use this here in part b? Well, let me just scroll up, make some more space. So this thing here is to, let me just call this star. So for part B, star is true if and only if, well, when I use this result here. And now the left-hand side is the integral from, of e to the x over x. The right-hand side is the integral of e to the x over x squared dx. So this is true if and only if the integral from a to 2a of e to the x over x dx equals... Now I'm going to replace this with what I've just worked out here. So that's going to be minus e to the x over x from a to 2a plus the integral from a to 2a of e to the x over x dx. And beautifully, those guys cancel, and I'm just left with this term here. And obviously on the left-hand side, I've got 0. So subbing this in, I get e to the 2a over 2a minus e to the a over a equals zero, or technically it's the negative of that, but I've just multiplied both sides by minus one. And so multiplying both sides by 2a here um, gives me e to the 2a minus 2e to the a equals zero. Factoring out e to the a, I get something like this, and this is not too difficult to, from, from this we can deduce that a must be ln of two. Wonderful. So the value of a in part b is ln of two. And we can do something very similar for part c. We want to show that it's not possible to find distinct integers m and n such that the integral from m to n of e to the x over x dx equals the integral from m to n of e to the x over x squared dx. And we're almost going to do this by contradiction, if you like. We can use a similar result from part b. I'm going to skip a couple of steps here. And we just get that the integral of e to the x over x from m to n would have to equal 0. And if you sub this in, like so, and I'm going to divide both sides by e to the m. I get e to the n minus m over n minus 1 over m equals 0, and so in other words, e to the n minus m equals n over m. And this is a big issue because this suggests that e to the n minus m is a rational number, and that is not true whenever the power of e is a positive integer. So if n minus m is a positive integer, um, which I guess we can assume without loss of generality. So here, I guess I've, I should have maybe said this at the start. So without loss of generality, n is bigger than m. We're told in the question they're distinct. And so this is going to be e to a positive integer power equals a rational number. That's our contradiction. And that solves this problem. And a quite nice little step two problem, I think. Um, 
using integration, using a technique, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure if there's a name for this technique. And I guess it only works in very special circumstances where um, the integral you want, you're happy to write in terms of another integral. Uh, but this is how we solve this problem. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.